Hello all, so today we will be having a brief and short topic discussion on pediatric and preventive dentistry. So we will be dealing with development of occlusion today. The stages of dental development can be broadly divided into four stages. You have a gum pad stage, then a primary dentition stage, a mixed dentition stage and a permanent dentition stage. So today we will be dealing with the gum pad stage, the various anatomical features in the gum pad stage as well as its clinical findings. Now, gum pad stage is actually the alveolar process at the time of birth. So, it extends from the birth till the eruption of the first primary tooth. That is, it extends from birth till 6 months of age. That is when the central incisors erupt into the oral cavity. Now, another question that you can come from the gum pad stage is regarding the shape of the gum pads. So, the upper gum pad is horseshoe shaped and the lower gum pad is U shaped. Now, another thing that we need to know about the gum pad stage is the various developmental grooves as well as sulci that is present in the gum pad stage. So, the gum pads they are broadly divided into a labial portion as well as a lingual portion by the dental groove. Then you have a division like you have transverse grooves that divides your gum pads into 10 segments. Each of that corresponds to the development of the uh, future primary tooth. Now, Another group that you see in gum pad is the gingival group which separates the gum pad from the palate. Then you have a lateral sulcus. Again it is a transverse group that is seen between the deciduous canine and the first deciduous molar. This lateral sulcus is very important in predicting the inter arch relationship. So all these grooves and all these sulci they are very very important for your exam point of view. Now, next thing that you need to know about the gum pads is what happens when both the gum pads occlude. So, when both the upper and the lower gum pads occlude, you can see that the maxillary gum pad is wider and longer than the mandibular. So, when they are approximated, you can see a complete overjet all around. Then, also when they occlude, you can see that contact occurs only at the posterior region or in the molar region and that will that is called the infantile open bite which is considered normal and it is helpful during suckling of the child. Now, next thing that you need to know about the gum pads is regarding the transient malocclusion. So, transient malocclusions, they are actually self-correcting malocclusions or self-correcting anomalies. That is, they look anomalies at that particular point of time, but later, without doing any interventions, it will get corrected on its own. So, the transient malocclusions that you see during the gum pad stage is the first one is retrognathic mandible. So, retrognathic mandible, when the gum pads occlude, you can see that the mandible is more distally Placed when compared to that of the maxilla. But this retrognathic mandible, it will correct with the cephalocaudal growth as well as the differential growth of the mandible. Now, the second transient malocclusion is about the complete overlap of the maxillary gum pad. So, I have already mentioned that when both of them occlude, there is a complete overjet all around, which is again self-correcting and it will be corrected by the transverse as well as the sagittal growth of the mandibular gum pad. Now, the third transient malocclusion is the infantile swallow. So, this infantile swallow will be corrected with the initiation of function at about 18 months of age. Then you have an anterior open bite that is the contact occurs only in the posterior region. This anterior open bite will be corrected with the eruption of the primary incisors. So, that is it about the transient malocclusions that you see during the gum pad stage. Now, as I have already mentioned, gum pads are alveolar process at the time of birth. So normally the first tooth, that is the first tooth or the first primary tooth erupts within 6 months of age. But in some cases you can see that the tooth is erupted by the time of this gum pad itself at an earlier age. And those tooth are typically called as natal teeth or neonatal teeth. So a natal tooth is the tooth that is present at the time of birth and neonatal tooth is the tooth that is present from birth till the first 30 days of life. So, this is an again an important uh, question or an important topic for you and the incidence of the natal and neonatal teeth again it is important. The incidence of a natal tooth is 1 is to 1000 and that of a neonatal tooth is 1 is to 30,000. And then you can have questions like which is the most commonly affected tooth. So, the most commonly seen natal tooth is mandibular incisors followed by the maxillary incisors and then comes mandibular cuspids molars as well as the maxillary cuspids and molars. Now, the etiology of natal tooth is that 
Natal tooth can be caused due to the either superficial positioning of the tooth germ or it may be due to an increased rate of eruption due to febrile incidence or it is associated with infections or malnutrition and also it is seen associated with various syndromes like Ellis Van Creval syndrome, Hallerman Streiff syndrome, Riga Fede syndromes etc. Now, the natal tooth can be broadly classified into two. You can have a mature teeth and a immature teeth. Again, this is a question for you. So, the classification as mature and immature is given by spouch and face by. So, a mature tooth is a, a mature neonatal teeth is those tooth which are fully developed in shape and comparable in morphology to that of a primary tooth. And an immature teeth when the structures and developments are incomplete. You have one more classification for natal tooth which has been set by the Hebling. So Hebling has classified natal tooth into four clinical categories. So as seen in the picture, you can see that the first type is a shell shaped crown that is poorly fixed to the alveolus by the gingival tissue and there is also absence of root. Then you can see a solid crown that is poorly fixed to the alveolus by the gingival tissue with little or no root. Then you have can see a next type of natal teeth is that there will be eruption of the incisal margin of the crown through the gingival tissue and in type 4 you have edema of the gingival tissue with an unerupted but palpable tooth. Now regarding the treatment aspects of natal tooth. So normally the natal teeth is a tooth that is in the that corresponds to the primary dentition only that is they are a tooth of the normal dentition. So we should try all our level best to maintain the tooth in that position. And extraction of a natal teeth is indicated only if it interferes with feeding or if it is a supernumerary tooth or if it is extremely mobile and that leads to the chance of or a risk of aspiration of the tooth. And before you go for an extraction of a natal tooth, certain things that you have to keep in mind is regarding the waiting period that you have to maintain before the extraction of the tooth. So before you extract a natal tooth, it is always advised to wait for about 10 to 20 days. That is actually for the commensal flora of the intestine to establish and produce vitamin K essential for prothrombin formation in liver because infants will be suffering from hypoprothrombinemia. And in rare cases, we may not be able to wait because the chance of aspiration if it is very high, then you need to evaluate the need for administration of vitamin K with the help of a pediatrician and if the newborn was not medicated with vitamin K immediately after birth. And if you are administering vitamin K, the rate of that and the root of that is again very important. It should be administered 0.5 to 1 milligram intramuscularly to prevent the hemorrhagic disease of newborn. Now, the another the clinical in, clinically important thing that you have to know in the gum pad stage is regarding the traumatic ulcerative lesions. So, you know that ulcerative lesions are common in children and you can see two types of ulcerative lesions during the gum pad stage. So, the first one is the Riga Fede disease that is caused due to the, that is actually a sublingual traumatic ulceration caused due to the natal teeth. Then you have pterygoid ulcers or bedner safte. They are those uh, ulcers which are present near the greater palatine foramen. So the first type of ulcer is the Riga Fede disease which is a sublingual ulceration caused due to a natal tooth. So when there is a sublingual ulceration caused due to a natal tooth, the treatment aspect is that generally they resolve without any treatment, especially if the infant is having a normal cognitive ability. And if it is not resolving on its own, then you go for smoothening of the sharp incisal edges of the natal tooth that has been erupted. Or you can try for placing of domes of composite resin over the tooth surface. And as a last resort, you can think about extraction of the offending tooth. But you should always keep in mind about the uh, waiting period that you have to follow before the extraction of the natal or neonatal teeth. Now, the second type of ulcers that you see is the pterygoid ulcers or the bedners of FTA. So they are actually superficial traumatic abrasions of the palatal mucosa that are seen near the greater palatine foramen resulting from attempts to clear the mouth of the foreign matter at the time of birth. So because of that there will be abrasion of the mucosa and that will lead to stripping of the area and later that may be covered with a necrotic membrane. And the treatment aspect of pterygoid ulcers is that it is usually supported since the ulcers are self-limiting and they heal spontaneously. 
Now, regarding the etiology of a bedness safte, so most likely, as I've already mentioned, a bedness safte or a pterygoid ulcers, they are seen due to the cleaning of the oral cavity and it can also be caused due to mechanical trauma by a heart teat or a pace pacifier or it may be due to the traumatic nature of the nipple of the feeding bottle or due to horizontal positioning of the feeding or if the infant formula or the formula milk the child is using, if it is having a slightly increased temperature, that will lead to burning of the oral cavity and again lead on to ulcers or it may be due to the smaller hall size of the nipple that may be caused due to increased pressure of suckling as well as the loss of mucosa in that region. So these are the two common uh, ulcerative lesions that you see in the infant during the gum pad stage. So this is the picture of a pterygoid ulcers or a bedness after you can see a necrotic pseudomembranous area that is seen in the posterior aspect near the greater palatine foramen. Now, another uh, important things that you need to know in the gum pad stage is about the Epstein pearls. So, Epstein pearls they are actually formed along the mid palatine raphe and they are usually considered remnants of the epithelial tissue trapped along the raphe as the fetus grow. Now, another thing that you need to know is about the bones nodules. So, bones nodules, they are, as shown in the picture, they are actually formed along the buccal and lingual aspect of the dental ridges on the palate away from the raphe and they are usually considered remnants of the mucous gland tissue and are histologically different from the Epstein pearls which we have already discussed. Now, the last thing that you need to know during the gum pad stage is about the dental lamina cyst. So, dental lamina cysts, they are those cysts which are present, present at the crest of the maxillary and mandibular dental ridges and they usually apparently originate from the remnants of the dental lamina. So, these three lesions that is the Epstein pearls, bonds nodules and dental lamina cysts, they are actually usually asymptomatic and they resolve on its own and they exfoliate soon. So, you don't have to go for any treatment. So, this is about the clinical aspects of the gum pad stage. So, in the gum pad stage, you need to know the the various grooves, its clinical significance and what happens when the gum pads occlude. Now, there are the clinical factors that you need to know during the gum pad stage that is about the natal teeth, neonatal teeth, then about the ulcerations that you see in the infant during the gum pad stage as well as the tree lesions. Thank you.